well, well, do we have a lawsuit to talk about. So, as of yesterday, Wednesday, March the 20th, the news has broken that a class action lawsuit has been issued against, listen, before we get into any more detail on this, um, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know the ins and outs, okay, everything's alleged, <laughs> so bear with me as I will most likely use the wrong terminology for everything. MS is being taken to court by two California shoppers who are sick and tired of playing the Hermes game. This is truly fascinating and interesting and worth us having a little bit of a chat about here on the channel. I'm going to go into the ins and outs of what they're alleging of Hermes, what the knock-on effects of this could mean, um, and also what I think about all of it. So this is a class action lawsuit. What does that mean? Uh, I think it just means that more than one person can be involved. Apparently there's two people named on it at the moment. I don't know if other people will sort of add themselves into this lawsuit to go, I too. Um, don't like the fact that they've been doing this. These two California shoppers allege that they were required to buy ancillary, gonna have to give that a Google there, products from across categories. As we know, Hermes does ready to wear home pets, um, shoes, uh, all of that, as well as silks, scarves, other small leather goods. By the way, this lawsuit is specifically about the Birkin, okay? Apparently the Kelly didn't make it. It's just the Birkin. They were required to buy all of these extra products before being allowed to buy the ever elusive, the always talked about, the name on everybody's mouth, the Birkin. So apparently, so the reason that they've even brought this court case forward, apparently this violates US antitrust regulations that covers the tying of products, okay? This is the tying of the purchase of one good to another. So you are only allowed to buy one good if it is tied to something else. Stay with me. <laughs> and apparently this is an abuse of, mar of market power, allegedly. Let me just throw that word in every so often because um, my mental health can't handle. Okay. One piece of evidence that has been included in this is the SA commission structure. So if you are a sales associate at Hermes, you do not get commission when you sell any of the quota bags, your Birkins, your Kellys, so on and so forth. And they're basically, but you do get commission on everything else sold. So they basically sort of put this in as evidence that the sales associates are not motivated to offer or sell the Birkins um, specifically, uh, but they are basically motivated to sell you everything else that Hermes produces under the sun. Hermes has said previously that Hermes strictly prohibits any sales of certain products as a condition to the purchase of others. However, the Hermes CEO has previously um, acknowledged the fact that essays are sort of told to, let me make sure, encouraged to give hard to get bags to real clients as opposed to those um, who are going to resell it. As we know, Hermes is one of the top luxury brands and they perform incredibly well on the resale market because these bags are hard to get. I'm gonna circle back to this. But the resale market for Hermes is huge. They themselves are trying to curb the sale of these hard to get bags to make sure that it's going to people that aren't going to sell it essentially. I know this from like my experience of shopping at Hermes. That's, you know, what's sort of been implied with the various essays that I've worked with across the UK and the US and everything that they just want to make sure that these bags go into the hands of people that are going to enjoy the bags and not resell them. I find this super interesting because if you type in Hermes on any social media platform, half of the... 90% of those videos are going to be talking about the Hermes game, how to get a quota bag, how to get a Birkin, how to play the game, and how to win. Really, allegedly, all of those videos say the same thing, which is that it is highly encouraged for you to buy from other categories of Hermes, be it the shoes, be it fine jewellery, be it fashion jewellery, be it an Apple Watch, you know, with the Hermes one, be it, I don't know, an iPad cover, I don't know, I'm really just trying to think of anything that they sell, be it a saddle, be it a dog bed, be it any of those things, in order to sort of prove that you enjoy Hermes and that you're passionate about the brand before then, you are more likely to be offered a Birkin, a Kelly, so on and so forth. But 
I will say, and I know that this case is, I don't know if this sort of lawsuit is California specific or if it will, will then cover the whole of the US. I'm not sure. But I will say that, again, you will hear a range of people's experiences. A lot of people have done what I've just said, which is to buy from different categories and then you get offered the piece. Um, however, I know in different areas, different stores across the world, um, even within the US, this varies by store location, all of that. My experience of the London Sloan Street location is that they have a waitlist system. For some reason, my camera just decided to completely cut a whole section of what I was saying. So, when I got my uh, first work in, it was completely on a waitlist system. So I went in and I was like, hi, this is what I'm interested in. Waited a few months, didn't have to buy anything. And then when it arrived, I literally got an email being like, a bag has come in that meets your, you know, what you're interested in. Come in if you're interested to get it. Same thing has happened with my mum with that same store. I know that this is different to the way Bond Street operates, right? A lot of stores work very differently. We've all also heard stories of very lucky people who have just walked in one day and gone, hi, I would like a bag, and they've been given a bag. And then you've got the Paris leather appointment uh, thing, which is basically anyone is welcome to submit for an appointment request on the portal should your name be picked out of a hat. You get to go in and uh, have the pick of the crop and go, hi, this is what I'm after, and fingers crossed they've got something in the storage unit for you great you've got a leather appointment you don't have to have any purchase history you can say whatever you want when you get there you know i want a birkin 30 black togo gold hardware and you might just get one so the the experiences sort of vary by location even within the states but i'm just speaking from my own experiences is not this, I've never been told a dollar amount or a pound amount or any amount that I have to spend or a, you have to spend the same amount as the bag. I've never been told that. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I am a, you know, um, an expert level MS shopper. You know, I've got my bags, I'm happy to go in every now and again if something tickles my fancy. I will say, is it that deep? Like my first reaction to when I saw this and I know that the, the, the People are going to come at this from the angle of it democratizes this thing, right? Which we'll get back into. But my first reaction to this was, it's not that deep. Like, it's a bag. And I know that there is so much hype and pomp and ceremony about these bags. And maybe I feel that way because I have one. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I felt that about all bags. Like, I'm not going to go to the ends of the earth for this. Um, and so I sort of sat there and was like, is it that, de is it that deep to launch a, a class action lawsuit about it? I tell you one thing, it's a surefire way to never get offered one ever. Is it? Because like, even if they win, let's say, and I don't know kind of what are the chances of that, I don't know if they've got a good chance or a bad chance or whatever, even if they win, like, I don't know, I think you're blacklisted. I don't think that you can walk in with your head held high after winning this lawsuit going, and I'll have a Birkin, thank you. It's, you know, so, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. To me, it's just never that, it's never that deep, right? Like if I wanted one that much, I would cough up the money from the resale market and get the exact one that I wanted. And I and I saw this tweet yesterday that I wanted to sort of bring up because I thought it made an excellent point, which is, um, so Chloe I. Kennedy has tweeted, this lawsuit perfectly captures the concept of people being upset, the same exclusivity they wish to participate in is being upheld. Which leads me to my next point, which is, the Birkins and the Kellys are so hyped up and so highly regarded and so well coveted and the epitome of the luxury handbag food chain because of this, because of the game, because of the fact that they're hard to get. If you could walk in and say exactly what you wanted and being given exactly what you wanted, the pomp and ceremony about the bags does not exist anymore. They would not be the bags that they are without that. Another thing to note is that this strategy whatever it is, allegedly, has been working so well for MS that other brands are now trying to do a similar thing. Cough, Chanel, cough, allegedly. Um, so, MS is one of those brands that, whilst the rest of the brands have been, you know, sort of reporting slower growth or whatever, 
Hermes has been able to stand up against it and be like, we're doing all right, because the desirability is there with a capital D, and this is partly why. This is a big reason why, to be honest. And it's hard to kind of create that these days with bag. We see it bags come and go. We see, oh my gosh, this is the best bag in the world. And then, you know, you don't hear about it a year later. The fact that the Hermes Birkins Kellys have managed to be this sort of like the queens of the luxury handbags after all of these years, because it's been years and years and years that these bags have been talking about and coveted, is because they're hard to get. And it's because of this, whether official or unofficial, Hermes game, allegedly, um, that has created what these bags are. The fact that they are such investment bags because they're hard to get, they would not be this highly valued on the resale market if they were easy to get. So let's then put ourselves in the position of, let's say these people win, right? Or, or this lawsuit is won by the plaintiffs. Number one, in theory then, would it be easy to get a Birkin? I, I, again, I don't know if this is gonna be US wide or just California, but let's say it's just California, right? Well then, what Hermes could do is just limit supply and just all of a sudden there's no shipments of the bags going to California or the States or whatever, right? Because surely that's then something that they could do in order to keep the desirability of these bags. Because then, in point number two, let's say that that doesn't happen and they don't restrict supply and you can walk in and say, hi, you know, I, I want a Birkin, then the allure is lost. And again, that's what makes these bags. That's what, if you could go and get this bag, and these bags were easy to get, you wouldn't want one, after a certain amount of time. And yes, uh, there is also the price aspect. These bags are not cheap bags. These are, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollar bags. But should you have the ability to get one, if you could walk in and get one, you wouldn't want one. The, the hype and everything and the pomp and ceremony is then lost. Undeniably, Hermes has exceptional quality. It is a heritage luxury brand and it has survived all of these years because it's had it's been able to stand behind everything that is behind the hype right behind all of the hype and, and, and all of this for these bags is great quality great aftercare service all of that okay but these bags are what they are because of the game nobody is talking about the hermes bags that are easy to get when you walk in and go hi have you got an Xbox? i can't even list them Okay, I can't even tell you what the sort of, the garden party, is that bag? You know, it's just a normal sort of tote looking bag, like a canvas bag, right? Nobody is talking about the hype of getting a garden party bag because you can walk in and if they've got one, you can leave with it. All of this counts towards something. You know, there's the demand and supply of it all. Oh my gosh, economics, you know, it's all of that. That, so, <sighs> It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I don't know if they've got, you know, two legs to stand on with this case or what. I don't know the, the likelihood of any of this winning and losing and whatever. But I think without the game and all of that, these bags are not what they are. So I will keep you on top of everything. I will keep you updated. This is most definitely um, get your popcorn out, sit down and let's see how this plays out because it's it's fascinating. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are to do with all of this. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. And in the words of my father, I'll see you in my next video. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. Mwah. Bye guys.